Hello there, this is DBT, and this is Art of Rooms. And alright, it's time to continue playing some more Asphalt 8, and today we're gonna be testing this beauty. The Lamborghini Gallardo, oh yeah baby. You know that the update dropped, uh, what, like a week ago, a little over a week by now? And yeah, this car was of the 15 cars that got uh, rebalanced. Now, I did prioritize making a video on the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR for reasons that I explained on that video. Links should be appearing in the top right if I remember to put it. Otherwise, you can just check that video and looking it up. But today, it's time to actually test the Lamborghini that I've been waiting for so long to get rebalanced. This beauty. Oh, yeah. So you know how we do. We're going to go into classic, uh, classic season and just going to do some races. We have 106 at the moment, so... You know, you kind of know how this works. I show you every single race with the counter so you know that these are sequential. Not cherry picking. Whatever happens, happens. If I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. So let's go into that. Oh boy. Where do we start with this car? I guess I should give you a little bit of context of where it was before we talk about where it is now. This car used to be right in the middle between the brackets of 1500 and 1590. It had a, a rank of about 1545, so it was literally in the middle, where it would actually meet a ton of Pininfarinas H2 and IDRs. This is even before... Oh, come on, dude, really? This was even before the times of the, of the bracket system. That was just the natural competition that you would find. And even back then, this car could not... I mean, it could compete, but it wasn't amazing, honestly. Oh, God! The Pininfarina and the and the IDRs. All right, that was a terrible jump, and that's gonna lose me this entire race. <laughs> uh, the Pininfarina and the IDR were way stronger than this car simply because they had really, really good nitro duration, and if I remember correctly, the acceleration was also pretty good. So the car could put up a fight, but honestly, it's not like wow, it's the best car ever. Now, once the the bracket system appeared, what was it like? A year and a half ago, however long it's been that the bracket system exists, um, this car was right there in the middle between the two brackets, so that means that on a bad day it would constantly be matched against cars that were 45 rank higher. But there were so many users of the Pininfarina and the IDR that it would be kind of a normal occurrence where this car would end up matching against them anyway, so it could still put up a decent fight for the most part. That was our first race. Tramontana XTR 911 GT3 because this guy knocked me down. Otherwise, I think I could have done pretty alright in the, in the race. It's fine, it's fine. I'm not I'm not triggered or anything. So even though the IDR and the H2 were somewhat able to do a ride in that bracket, even if they were also right in the middle, um, I think people over time just got tired of being matched against cars that were 45 rank higher. So you stopped seeing so many IDRs in H2s in this bracket. And for that same reason, I could not compete anymore with this car. So I've been waiting for the rebalance of this car for quite a while. I don't know why it took this long. I don't know what is the criteria that Gameloft is following for which cars get rebalanced. But hey, in the end, they took care of it. So that, that's fine. And nowadays, where does this car stand? Well, it got placed precisely in that same bracket where it was, but now is at where you would expect, at the top of the bracket, but not at the very end, meaning it's not uh, 1592, it's just 1590. And surprisingly, that's actually a higher rank than the H2 and the IDR that I was talking about. Those two cars used to be this car relatively easily back then. Nowadays, I don't know. It is said that those two cars became pretty bad, especially the IDR became apparently really bad, while the H2 seems to be okay-ish. Now, does this car, is this car better than those two? I don't know yet. That's why we're testing this. And to be completely honest, it's kind of empty. You don't really find a lot of races in this bracket, which is honestly kind of sad. Now, what did we get in this race? First place beating the 911, a uh, Renner Husseri GT, the Tramontana that, that knocked me down. An IDR, look at that, the IDR in a span. All right, that's fair. Let's, let's hope that we get more races quickly. You'll have to excuse me that I continue to talk about the IDR and the H2 in this video, but trust me, it's all connected. So, because those two cars were basically the kings back then, before the, the brackets were a thing, a lot of people had them, you know? Because obviously they were the meta cars, so people would go for metas, what was the strongest, and lots of people used those cars. 
So, once I learned that all those cars, the IDR, the the H2, and the Gallardo were going to be rebalanced, and all of them were going to be placed in this bracket, how did we know that? I mean, how did we know that? Well, it was because of the price change of the cars. You know that before the, car, the cars get rebalanced, game lock changes the prices. And if you know what are the prices that cars are normally sold at, you can kind of figure out where they're going to be placing them. So that's how we knew that all those three cars were going to be placed in the 1590 bracket. And honestly, I thought that that was a good move. Because the 1590 bracket is a very empty bracket. It seems that always has been. I, I don't know if it's because there hasn't been enough rebalances into it or what it is, but it's mostly an empty bracket. So I thought, hey, this is going to be great because it's going to repopulate that bracket massively. There's so many people that have the IDR and the H2 that the bracket is going to have a ton of players. That was a theory, and I think that's what could have happened. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, it seems that those rebalances made those cars kind of bad. And honestly, I didn't expect them to be kings anymore. That is for sure. Okay, so what happened in this race? Again, another first place, beating 911, Husaria GT, 911, a 45 baby Italian, which I think it's pretty strong now, right? And another 911. All right, cool. I'm getting some lucky results, I would say. So by making the old kings kind of bad, or maybe straight up bad, I don't know, I still have to test them. Um, yeah, it seems that people are not super interested in using them in races anymore. So that makes it so that this bracket is still considerably empty. Now, obviously, it all depends also on what time you're, uh, what time you're playing, when, uh, when is the pick of the players playing, and all of that stuff. But right now, I'm having a relatively decent, uh, a relatively decent amount of luck in getting some races relatively quickly with six players. But it's not very uncommon that I end up finding uh, lobbies that are struggling to get the four players to start the race. It's kind of, kind of annoying. So yeah, hopefully, because right now we're in, let's say, the adaptation. Uh, period of the update again the update released like barely a week ago so maybe people are still trying to figure out what what goes where and what is what and that is why you don't see so, too, too many people playing in this bracket even though again there's gonna be a ton of people with the IDR and the H2 but if they were made that bad where people don't want to use it well then that strategy didn't work and this um, this bracket continues to be very empty I mean, maybe there's enough cars, but there's not enough people interested in using the cars. But we got another W with my Gallardo. Oh, I feel so good to finally be able to get some Ws with this car, I tell you. 911 GT3, Ferrari 458, Husaria GT, and two more 911s. Beautiful, beautiful. I think... All right, let's do... I think I want to change the color, but not yet, not yet. I went with this lime green color for the car because that's the default color for the car and I think it's kind of recognizable in a way. But the reality is that I don't necessarily love to use this particular color. While I normally don't like dark or rather black cars, um, the, for this particular one, there's this one Liberty. You have seen me use it before and now we will use it in a little bit. Uh, I love that combination of a dark color with the Liberty. It's very minimal, but I definitely like it. Now, I did see that in this race there is a... Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Formula E Gen 2, which has been considered, and probably still is, a king. This was a very high jump, wasn't it? Uh, a, the king of this, this bracket. Now, is it still the undisputed king? I don't know. But, oh yeah, there it is. Oh man. I wish I had that car, by the way. But apparently it was super, super exclusive, because it was only available when it was available, and never again. It has never once been on sale. So I would imagine that it's a car that is just not returning to the game. What makes that car so strong? I have no idea. I would imagine probably acceleration, nitro duration maybe. I, I really don't know. So I'm just trying to conserve as much nitro as possible. Because if anything, I'm willing to say that the nitro on the Gallardo isn't amazing. Not bad, not amazing, but you do see that I'm having to struggle Oh, look at that. He's a clean racer. Okay. You know what? You take the W. I'll be okay with that, man. That was a clean race. Oh, is that driver Saint Anthony? I think he always plays in this. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, you know what? Respect, mister, because you played very clean at the very end. He could have easily tried to push me, but instead he went just for a straight, straight line. And, you know, I got to respect people who play clean. I always say that. 
But other than that, we did beat another Formula E gen, pinning for Rina, 911, Ferrari, 458, and another 911. Nice, but I imagine that my boosters are kinda gone by now, are they? Yes, they are. Good time to change the color. Now, if you're enjoying this video, why don't you hit the like button and tell me in the comments if you have this car and if you if you have it, how did you get it? Did you buy it for tokens or did you acquire it from before? But let's, uh, let's look at the colors for this car. It has eight colors, which is nice to have a big variety of colors. Straight up black, we got yellow, we got gray, we got another kind of like silvery whitish. Orange, I love cars in orange. Uh, we got blue, well it's a dual tone color, green and blue, and the other dual tone, tone with like reddish and some shade of purple, I don't know. But the combination that I really like, and you know what, let me, let me actually show you the decals that are available for this car. Because it's an old car, it has a bunch of decals available or liveries or whatever you want to call it. So there we go, oh Jesus. Uh huh, there's that, this one that I've never liked very much, I don't like it very much. We got that one, looks kind of nice. We got this one, also looks very nice, although I don't love the fact that it makes it black at the very back. Um, we got this, which I like. I think this one looks better, probably with a color like black, maybe? Not too eye-catching. Orange and orange doesn't quite work, although it makes it kind of subdued, and I like the little accent, so that could be. Uh, we got this one, which is the one that I like. Why do I like this one so much? Because when you do this... Oh, wait, no, that's not the one that I wanted. Never mind, I don't... That was not the one, but it's fine, it's fine. Apparently I bought it at some point. <laughs> we got this one. We got that one, which probably could look nice with this one, maybe, or in black. And we got this. Now this is the one that I was thinking about, because then it looks... Oh, look at that. Yeah, not a straight up black, because it still has this additional shade. Because So if you made it, make it completely black, that gets lost. So then it's just a couple of red lines. But when you have it like this, or maybe even like this, it shines very nicely, although I think this is my favorite. Uh, we got this one, we got four credits, that one, credits, which also looks kind of nice, I gotta say. A tokens, and more credits, but yeah, so far from what I've always used, this is my favorite, and that's what we'll continue to use, so let me activate my boosters and do some more races. So now let's see if the livery is gonna bring me some additional luck, maybe. So overall, look, there's again the, the Formula E Gen, so I think the E-Gen remains to be probably one of the kings. I would imagine that there's gotta be more cars that can really, really challenge that position nowadays. Because the Formula E-Gen is kinda oldish. It's been probably like two, three years since it was made available. So there's still probably cars that can put a good fight against it. Well, this can put a fight, but I mean, I don't know if it can just straight up to throw it. But overall, the performance so far of this car seems to be pretty good. Like I said, I wish the Nitro lasted a little longer. But that is true for pretty much any car that I drive. I'm like, ooh, Nitro could be better. Well, yes, of course it could, but should it? Um, but other than that, the car seems to perform pretty damn well. The acceleration is absolutely good. King level, I don't know, but it's good. It's competitive, which is all I want. And um, the handling, the drifting, it all seems to fall in line with good competitive cars, you know? I'm not sure if taking that little jump is a good or a bad idea, but oh well. Might as well get all the nitro that I can. And just enjoy my Gallardo. Now, Game of why did you give it a V12 sound? It's a V10. Change it, please. Just, just make it have the same engine sound as the Huracan and we'll be fine. Why did you give it a V12? This car is... Oh, Jesus, I bounced. I bounced on the wall. Ah, that was weird. We're fine, we're fine. We still got the W. Oh, that's right! He's the one that quits if he doesn't win! I remember now. Okay, well... Switch their own! <laughs> anyway, so... Um, yeah, overall, it seems like the performance of this car is good. Again, I'm very, very, very bad at trying to be like, Oh, is this a king or is this not a king? I don't know. All I know is that the car now is actually competitive, and in the end, that's what I've wanted from all of these rebalances, to make the cars competitive and, you know, even if they're not amazing, so long as you can participate with them and get some okay results from time to time, that's more than enough for me. Then again, they kind of did our beautiful, well, uh, interesting looking Egoista kind of dirty. Is the 
future. But overall, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that cars are getting rebalanced. As it stands, there's actually only two more Lamborghini cars that have not been rebalanced yet that require a rebalance. Well, I mean, they're gonna be rebalanced one point or another. Could be in one patch, could be in two patches, who knows? And that is the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento currently in like 1640 or something. So it's also in the middle of its bracket. And the Lamborghini Terzo Millennium, which is at a rank of like 18 of... Stop pushing me, you mother... Hmm. So some people, some people drive uh, race clean, some people don't, as you can clearly see over there. Um, but yeah, those are the two Lamborghinis that are left to rebalance. It seems very likely that the Sesto Elemento will be placed in 1680, while the Terzo Elemento will be placed in 1860. So we'll see. Hopefully, the, I don't know. I feel like the Sesto Elemento could be at 1770, just because it's such a crazy race car. But you know how Game of this, and they don't care too much about making sets. <coughs> SB and SBJ situation, just saying. I'm sorry, I will never get over the fact that they put the SBJ uh, on top, I mean, at a lower bracket than the than the regular SV. They should have been in the same bracket, whatever that bracket may be. Whether that's the 1770 bracket or that is the, the 16, 1860 bracket, they should be in the same bracket, just with a little differentiation of maybe one being at 58, for example, at 1658, the other one at uh, 1815. You know what I'm saying? Let me try that again. 18... 58 and the other one at 1859 something like that you know at least that would make a bit more sense and i lost 20 points ow oh, oh my sides they hurt <laughs> and while we're talking about lamborghini rebalances and all of that i know that abinav if you watch this i know you're upset about this but come on the egoista is not that strong <laughs> The Egoista used to be a class A car, and now we got demoted into this bracket. Despite, regardless of the fact that it kind of... Okay, yeah, the acceleration on, on that Formula E gen is way faster. Um, regardless of the fact that Game of doesn't make much sense with their, with their numbers and whatnot, um, the Egoista, in real life, it's a... Let's say a body kit of the Gallardo, it's based on the Gallardo, so it's not like, wow, it's an incredibly fast car or anything. It looks crazy, yes, but it's not like, wow, this is the most amazing, fastest ever car, nah. So I can understand that they put it back into this bracket, but again, that's me trying to give Game of too much credit as to why they choose to make, to put the cars where they put them. Like, uh, someone was asking, like, why are two of the Muslers in Class S and another one is in Class B? Well, because they, oh God, Jesus. I thought I was gonna get knocked down. The Class B one is the GT3 car, and GT3 cars are um, powered restricted to about 600 horsepower in real life. Ah, oh, Jesus, that was a terrible job. Ah, that's terrible. So it would make sense that all of the GT3 cars would be placed around the same bracket, right? And that's what seemingly they're doing and putting them in the 1680. That's what they did with the with the Mosler. We got also the Mercedes-Benz GT3. But then you have other GT3 cars like the Mercedes, uh, excuse me, the Bentley Continental GT3. And they, that one, they put it on this same bracket. Or was it 1500? I don't know. It makes no sense. So that's why in the end I say, I, it's hard to try to understand where Gameloft is putting the cars because I don't know. What, what can I say at this point? What can I say? And while I've been having some bad luck in the last few races with some knockdowns or terrible jumps that I'm doing, I think it shows in general that this car is all right. It's quite all right. I think I would even dare to say it's good. So overall, I'm happy. I just really hope that the that the brackets end up becoming full again, you know? It's also kind of tough because right now there's three multiplayer season. There is the classic season, there's master season, and as I'm recording this, there's also the bike season. So at that point, you're splitting the player race in three. Now, honestly, I don't think players will be too interested in doing the bike season for too long. I imagine most people are probably just going for the the reward by reaching elite, which is going to be half a million fusion coins, which is obviously welcome. It's something that we all want to get. And after that, I would imagine they would be returning. But yeah, overall, I, I just wish there was more... Pop some of these brackets were more populated. And again, this is one of those precisely that is underpopulated. And the fact 
that the they made the old C-class kings bad in here. Makes it so that people don't want to use it. So, oh Jesus Christ, that was a terrible drift. Uh, that 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 made it so that people don't want to use those cars. And this bracket remains to be without a lot of people. And honestly, that is indeed kind of sad. But you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens over time. Hopefully. People will be more interested in driving not only in 1320 and 1860. We want to see more. Um, as I mentioned in my rant um, as to the sad state of the game, I do think that people are just leaving the game because there's very little new to do. And in saying that, I suggested that they should do uh, MP2, meaning Master Season, to be more varied. And instead, what they did is add MP3 to split the player base further with a game mode that is going to last for an, I mean, an, a series that is going to last last an entire month. Like Jesus Christ! But anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, GameLoft can figure something out that is going to make the game very interesting again and get more people playing. Because it's fun to play with other cars, but there's not a lot of people doing it, and that makes it difficult. But anyway, that's what I'm going to leave it for today. As usual, you know what to do if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, all of that good stuff. Also, check these videos that YouTube is very sure that you will be interested because I made them and they're about cars, so you might like them. But that's all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.